right, so we're here with uh, the actual champion, Joe Brennan. Uh, so, here you go. Thank you. <laughs> uh, definitely earned. XO in the Swiss. Basically just crushed it every round. I guess you drew one round and didn't crush it, but never made mistakes. Look, looked crisp the whole I day. made a mistake in the top eight. Really? Okay. Against Death and Taxes, he sourced the plow, shared my Garmag Angler, and I missed my Leovold draw trigger. Oh, I was so ahead okay. on board that it wouldn't matter, but that okay. was the one mistake I made. Okay, but yeah, I mean, your play is always super tight. You always know what you're doing. You're always confident with all your plays. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any specific, uh, like, crazy interactions, crazy stacks, anything specific that happened that was, like, story-worthy today? I mean, I got the misdirect and ancestral visions. That's always cool. Sounds pretty yeah. good. Um, were, were you... I think you discussed that with Kevin too. That was the same matchup where you were like super behind otherwise. Yeah, I wasn't. I was definitely not winning that. Okay. You know? And uh, the divert was super sick in the semifinals. The divert was strong. I think he should have waited till his end step to cast the murderer's cut because he knows I'm going to activate death ray shaman targeting something in his graveyard, yeah. so he can respond to that by delving away the target from the death ray shaman and then he and just functionally the gains two and gains two life. Yeah. I mean, he still gets the two-for-one blowout from the Diver, but at least he's two life higher and has yeah. another turn to cast his call against Command. Yeah, and we do apologize to the viewers. We thought that the whole time he was at eight when you were figuring out that, like, last turn. It turns out he was actually just at three. He was at three, yeah. So he's just dead to the death rate activation. So his mana was super weird that game because he fetch, 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 fetched, mm -hmm. but he just fetched for basics and turned off his own mana. He had that call against Command in his hand the entire game. Yeah. And he just was never able to leverage it. Do you, so Kevin discussed that a bunch. He says that he thinks people fetch for basics too often. Have you found that to be the case also as the Wasteland deck? Well, so I play basics myself. I always yeah. play basics in my Legacy decks. This is like the least amount of basics I've ever played yeah. in a Legacy deck was two. Um, but typically if I'm on the play with a Deathrite Shaman, then I'll fetch for an Underground Sea because I don't really care if I get Wasteland and I'm okay. so far ahead at that point. But on the draw, a lot of times I want to I want to fetch for uh, a basic swamp. It's also I don't play Bayou because it's kind of a little awkward having basic swamp in a deck with days. Yeah. Um, but you know, on the draw when there's no days, it's not you know. Okay. A lot of times you just want to bluff that there's a days. Yeah. You know, and if there's a swamp in play, they know it's in. The so you you were actually game. just taking out all four all day. On the draw. Yeah. In most matchups. Okay. We weren't sure. We figured everyone was taking out at least two, but we figured it would. It wasn't clear how many were actually gone. Nah, it's so tempo negative on the draw. Okay. Days is really good on the play. I cut Force of Wills so often. I cut Force of Wills in like almost every matchup. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have a question about the Royal Assassin. What's that actually for? Like, what well, matchup is that specific to? It's very strong against Eldrazi. Any any fair matchup. Any okay. Delver Mirror, it, it's really the Mirror Breaker and the Death Rite Shaman Mirror. Okay. It lets me just go nuts with my Death Rites, and you can't really activate yours, because then I'll just respond. Oh, yeah, because it kills Royal a tap Assassin. creature, yeah. You also don't have to pitch a card to kill a, a Reality Smasher when you target it, because okay. it's not casting a spell. Okay, yeah, because it's a creature, so it's like Big Game Hunter. I even bring it in against Sneak and Show. I had a... It was, there was a an EE qualifier for before EE, the, before the last EE, um, and it was in a top eight match, and there was a guy, we, we got in a fight over his sneak and show, over okay. his sneak attack, or his uh, show and tell. Yep. And, you know, dumped a bunch of counter spells, I lost the fight, he put an Emrakul, and I put in Royal Assassin, and then I top decked in Snaring Bridge, cast the bridge, um, he wipe away my bridge to attack, and then with the, and I had an underground scene, a death ray shaman, I sandbagged in my hand, and then with the trigger on the stack, I killed the Emrakul, and then Next turn, I played the death right into the last six points to him. Oh, jeez, so, yeah, that's insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I also have heard a story from uh, when you were at Target one night where you had a Royal Assassin staring down an Endbringer for mm -hmm. numerous turns and neither of you could pull the trigger on activating. Mm -hmm. Do you find that that stuff happens like more often than you'd expect? Well, like, just Royal cool Assassin stories? doesn't usually kill many creatures. He just stands there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because nobody really that's attacks true. into him. Yeah. You know, but that's fine. You yeah. Know? Like, if I can activate my death rights and you can't, or if I can, you know, swing through with my Delvers in the okay. air or a Vendillion click or something and you can't attack back, that's exactly where my deck's trying to okay. be. It's much more grindy of a Delver deck than, than like, yeah. a red-based Delver decks, you know? Yeah. I have a lot of card advantage cards in the sideboard. Yeah, like it, it felt like you, all your cards were two, three, four for ones. They're just all yeah. at least tempo neutral and almost always tempo positive. Yeah, and then it... it Against death and taxes, I did a. This is probably the best interaction. That, um, I held priority on my Delver trigger, and cast brainstorm to set up the Delver. 
and then I put my forces wheel. I found a days off. Oh yeah, we saw that. That looks great. Where you tricked him because I figured he's gonna plow in yeah. my upkeep, and you and dazed I was it. Able to bait it with the thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. We we thought that looked really really good because you were able to lure him into like, hey, you gotta do it right now. I have the hard counter, and then you're like, I'll counter it. Right. Yeah. yeah. That looked really, really tight. That was a, a, a play we discussed probably for like 30 to 40 seconds because it was just it was fantastic. Uh, so you're happy with pretty much every slot, though? You you like the one divert? Like, would you play this list going forward? Would you make any specific changes? I mean, whenever I feel like playing You know, sometimes I put in a snaring bridge in the sideboard or, you know, if it's a more creature-heavy, like if I like my local stores and stuff here and uh, over at Highlander, if I know there's going to be more creature-heavy decks, then I might... Like shave an abrupt decay down to three and push it up to three fatal pushes, okay. or combo heavy. There might you know might cut a fourth abrupt decay and add a second spell pierce or okay. something like that. You know. No, but otherwise, see. you you thought this was just you just feel confident in the choice and you just got to jam some games all day. I do well with it. You know, it's good against True Name Nemesis, um, which is like a problem for Delver decks typically. Yeah. Um, it's really good against him, the Torak, Abrupt Decay, and the Ancestral Visions. Yeah. You know, it's good against all the other bug decks. The Abrupt Decay is like, when people cast Abrupt Decay, they figure, okay, this can't be interacted with, and they're not expecting cards like Divert and Misdirection. Yeah, yeah people have gotten pretty out. pretty lazy on their casting Abrupt Decay, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, well, the list looked great all day, and uh, we're glad to have had you in the booth. Thanks a lot, Played bro. some great magic. Good to see you again, man. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's going to conclude our coverage of the day. So we hope everyone enjoyed. And uh, for the Bearded Dragon and the Tales of Adventure team, uh, here from the Bearded Dragon Platinum EE6 Satellite in Burnersville, New Jersey, uh, this is going to be Brad Bonin calling it for the day. I hope you guys had fun, because we sure did.